Hello there, this is Groovy and G, and welcome back to my channel. Today we're on to some new and exciting programs, and this one is called Twisted Wave. Now, I've been using this program for a while, and I think it integrates absolutely beautifully with Audio Finder. So I'm quickly going to show you how I've got this set up. Now, I've shown you before, if I double click a file in my Finder, it automatically opens in Audio Finder. So to set this up is very simple. You just right click on an audio file, get info, come to this left panel here and then where it says open with, you just select Audio Finder and then change all and continue. So then any file you click will open in Audio Finder automatically. So to take this one step further, I then have it so if I double click a file in Audio Finder, it actually opens in Twisted Wave. So to set this up, you go Options, Tools Setup, and you can add an application. You could do Adobe Audition or another audio editor or Audacity, but I love Twisted Wave, so I've done Twisted Wave as my audio editor. So now, I've got this sample that I want to do a bit of work on from Audio Finder and I'm in Twisted Wave. One of the main reasons why I love combining these two programs is because Twisted Wave you can destructively edit files whereas in Audio Finder everything is always duplicated. Whenever you process something it always creates a duplicate. And one of the problems with this is that if I if I select this file now and I go process and say I want to normalize this file, what it's done is create a duplicate but it's not retained any of the tag information or the metadata that I've entered in Audio Finder. So what you can do is if you've opened this file in Twisted Wave, I could then say if I want to make this specific cut quieter, I can edit it save it and then if I click off and click back on you can now see it's made this part quieter and if I come back to Twisted Wave and I do the opposite and make it louder and save again it's now brought the game back up on that chop. Very handy so you can destructively edit the original samples using Twisted Wave, which is something you can't do in Audio Finder. Now you can take this one step further in Twisted Wave, where it's actually got this batch processing feature. And you can set this up with a script. So if I say normalize to minus one, and then if I want to change it, I can come into this edit window. And then I add action and save, and I can I can choose to edit how it's saving and I, at the moment I've got it set on original location so and I'm allowing it to overwrite the file. So what this means if I've got a folder, if I've got a folder in Audio Finder, say this one full of drum breaks which I've I've taken off the internet and I want to normalize them all, I can drag them all into this batch processing window, start processing, it's going to overwrite my files, save and now, all of these samples have been brought up to minus one. So, really, really, really handy. So, another amazing feature of this program is that it can record sounds into it. And you can set this up by going into the preferences. I've just used the hotkey command and comma. And you select your input device. So, at the moment, I've got my audio interface which is a Motu M2 selected and I can choose the channels which it's recording on and this Motu has these loopback channels so these loopback channels allow you to kind of record your system output so anything playing in my computer I can play through Twisted Wave so if I hit record I can just hit a jump break and I can record stuff from my computer like this. I can also come to YouTube and I can 
record drum breaks or any other sound off the internet that I want actually. So I've got this drum break and I'm going to pause it and then I'm using now, I'm using tab and it's got this tab to transient feature so I can just press tab and it's going to jump to all the transients it's detecting with its threshold and it's got it's really good I don't think you can change it but it's got a really good whatever algorithm it's using to detect the transient it's very accurate and then you can double click if you set markers with M you can then double click inside the marker region to select that specific chop so it, the, if I want to delete this whole lot I can just delete that out and then that's the that's the start of the new drums you can see I'm just getting that and that's kind of perfectly on it could even be like there delete that out okay maybe it's a little bit too long still maybe I want that bit up okay so now I've got my drum break taken off YouTube and I can normalize it up using this button here now one one really great thing about doing it this way is that you actually skip out that last process of ripping from YouTube with like an mp3 converter whatever you're using whatever algorithm those programs are using they're always affecting and degrading the audio in some way for me it's definitely an improvement using loopback recording to say to rip stuff off the internet rather than an actual YouTube ripper. I'm sure there are some good ones out there, but that's just my personal opinion. So take that as you want. Okay, so we've got this file now and I've put in a few markers. If I put in a few more markers now, say I took a bit of time and I'm just using tab to go to transients, M to put in marker points, pretty quick and easy. Uh, you can't sadly go back using shift tab there's no go there's no way to go back a marker back a transient but what you can do is use alt and the left and right arrows and I don't know if you can see this yellow line highlight line you can use left and right alt left and right to jump between your markers so let's say I've, I'd gone and added markers to this whole file I can then select it and go markers split by markers and then hit split and then if I go um, that's an old one I've done drum break split two okay and then I hit select if I come to this folder it's now chopped it all up all the all the slices of that drum break so I know this function is included in a lot of other audio editors but I do find it useful for extracting sounds to take to bits of hardware or to chuck in a sampler. It kind of can be a bit quicker to do this before you start jumping in your door to get some of your kind of sound design and preparation ready for just having a good workflow once you're, you're in your door. Another feature I think even some of you Twisterwave users will have often glossed over is this selection editor. Now you can right click anywhere in this top region and hit customize toolbar. And you've got a couple of options here. You've got this selection length and cursor position. Now the selection length, you can just drag that in. Okay, and then you can see that. Now what this is showing me is if I select this, it's showing me the actual length of this portion of audio now I can put this into time and change it but when I'm doing this when I'm doing this particular process I like using samples now why this is particularly useful is it because if I come to this first drum hit quite often you'll have like a bit of a muted it, it's sometimes it kind of hits it and sometimes it sounds a bit weird but say I didn't like this first drum hit what I could do is I could put a marker at the start of it and another one at the next transient and then I can see that this drum hit is exactly 11,565 samples long 
Now, if I copy this size amount, I can come to another kick drum and I can select it and then I can come in the size, I can paste in the size from the first kick, I can copy this chop, select this chop, and then I can paste the second one into the first one. It's quite confusing, but to do this in a door is a lot more fiddly, and just being able to do it like this way can be really, really helpful. So yeah, one problem you do sometimes have is that the first kick, it will kind of, you see, you see, because it's not playing any of the build up, it's sounding a bit muted, but actually, this kick has got a lot of punch. So, one thing I do, which you just saw me there, which you, saw, which you just saw me do there, is take a little portion of a quiet portion of audio and just put it at the front. And you can even go effects silence or just press S. And that just means when you're previewing the sample, you can hear the punch of the first kick. Cool, so there are obviously some of the kind of more traditional things you can do, like reverse, you can change the gain of samples, you can add fades to the ends, if you wanted to fade out the end here. Can be very helpful. But you can also use effects and VSTs. So whilst Audio Finder can use effects, Twisted Wave can actually use effect stacks. So you can use multiple effects at the same time and then save them so you can come right back to them. So this is one I use, which is just some Tone Empire kind of saturation, compression EQ, sort of tubey sort of plugins for giving you some of that analog, analog warmth. If I select this file and I press play, It's, it, uh, I can then preview, I can bypass it. And then I can choose from my different stacks. So you can kind of quite quickly just apply different groups of processing. And if you have a few things set up, it can be quite quick. So if I apply and close, I've now written all that processing to the sample. Now, one thing to note here, which can be quite a good thing to get in a habit of doing, is to actually have that bit of silence before the first drum hit because if I'd applied it, the processing with, and I'd selected the file more like this, sometimes it just kind of messes up that first transient. There might be a bit of latency on the on the effect stack, so whatever it's doing, it's worth putting a bit of silence at the front, so. Okay, so one more thing I wanna talk about, and it's one of the most fantastic features of this program, is it has this insane pitch and speed processor, time, pitch and speed, pitch shifter. So let's just begin. So you can use its kind of generic pitch and shift, which I think might just be the Apple one. But if you use this ZTX processing engine, this is made by a company called Zynaptic. Where Twisted Wave has managed to incorporate their pitch shifting algorithm, which is one of the best I've ever heard. It is so good, especially pitching up, which is, I guess, how you can usually tell. I've got it set on best quality. Now, this natural pitch tends to kind of tame some of the transients. So I'll show you with this on and off, and then I'll also show you some of these different lambda kind of options. But from reading the manual a little bit, some of these are better suited to transient he heavy music and some of them are better suited to more vocal sustained notes. So let's start on standard. Okay, that's how it sounds in the beginning. That's how the original sounds. Let's go down. Nice, let's go up. Now it's a bit grainy there, but if I say change it to voice, A little bit smoother, maybe? Smooth. It's still pretty good. For going from pitch shifting up, it's pretty good. If I put the natural pitch, natural pitch on.
It's kind of a bit weird there with the natural pitch, but uh, let's go classics. They're all sounding quite similar. So let's go now, let's go, let's speed it up and let's pitch it up. Sounds awesome, doesn't it? And I can apply that and it's just loading. And then we can come back and we can do, do it again. And so that's gone up now two octaves. If I pitch it up more and slow it down, Oh, it didn't like that, did it? So that's kind of, it's it's the end of it. But that, for going up two octaves, is pretty great to my ears. I know it's a little bit harsh, but it's about as good as you're gonna get, I think, pitching up two octaves and speeding it up. That one especially, you know, going up one octave sounds amazing. You can go down as much as you like, generally, with these kind of, with pitch shifting, and it always sounds good sounds good apply and then we'll go back down again and we'll maybe slow it down let's try this transcribe one cool you see the way it's created this weird clicky thing at the start of where I've been processing it. So let's put a fade in there. I might actually just come in and delete this little portion of the audio. And now I've got a completely different texture sample than I had before. So let's go back to the original. So the pitch shifting algorithm is really fantastic in Twisted Wave. On the surface, I think it looks very simple, but it's it's got quite a lot of depth to it. And it kind of combines this, this really speedy, quick and handy workflow with just some really great f features. And it's, it seems like a really well thought out program. I almost feel like it's an extension of Audio Finder where some of the places that Audio Finder lacks like in the the processing where it's always creating duplicates and in and then in, in the sample tool i don't think the sample tool in in audio finder is as good as twisted waves this program really props it up for me and i love combining both of them i think they both got fantastic things about them so that's kind of my favorite features of twisted wave so thanks everyone for listening and look forward to more I look for more Twisted Wave content coming from me soon.